Welcome to the First Home Show podcast, created for first home buyers. I'm your host, Melissa Barlas. I'm a property lawyer, owner and founder of Conveyed, and I've been a first home buyer myself. In this podcast, I'm going to show you in up to 10 short minute increments what you need to know as a first home buyer, and I'll share with you all of my legal tips on how to purchase your first home successfully. Don't go it alone in the property market. We at Conveyed are here for you. the first home show podcast your guide to all things related to buying and owning your very first home i'm your host melissa barlas and in today's episode we are actually going to be diving deep into the costs associated with buying your first home a very very important topic um you know buying your first home is an exciting milestone but it's essential to understand the financial aspects involved with buying your first home And it's from things like stamp duty to legal fees. Uh, There's various costs associated that you need to consider when embarking on your journey of buying your first home. So without further ado, let's break it all down for you. So the first cost that we all know about is stamp duty. That's one of the most significant expenses when it comes to buying your first home. So I figured we'll we'll tackle that first. For example, in Victoria, stamp duty is a tax imposed by the state government on property transactions, and that's pretty much the same status for every every state uh, in Australia. The amount that you pay really depends on the purchase price of the property, with the higher higher price properties incurring the higher stamp duty costs. So the higher the, the price, the higher the stamp duty costs. However, First home buyers uh, in some states in Australia, including states like Victoria, um, may be eligible for concessions or exemptions on stamp duty. And that just depends on the property's value and a whole bunch of other criteria. For example, if we stick to Victoria, they include uh, entitlements like the first home buyer's stamp duty concession or exemption. It inc- they include um, the principal place of residence concession. And for new properties, there's also the first home buyer's grant available. Again, depending on whether you've met the prerequisites to, um, to be able to claim those concessions or exemptions. And it's really critical to research them and really factor in stamp duty into your budget right from the beginning. The State Revenue Office has a very uh, public available calculator that you can actually use to work out a rough estimate of your stamp duty and whether any exemption or concession entitlement applies. So just make sure, speak to your mortgage broker before you buy, um, speak to them about stamp duty and um, you should be able to following a discussion with them and using the publicly available calculator, be able to get a good estimate of the duty you may be able, you may be liable to pay on your transaction. Uh, the government has also included in their budget um, state-based uh, and federal schemes just to help first home buyers to fund their deposit. So there's these deposit schemes as of the 2023 to 2024 year. Of course, that's always subject to change. But as at that time, there are these schemes available by the government to help you fund your deposit if you're a first home buyer. Some schemes allow the government to also own part of your property in exchange for helping you. So please, please consult with your mortgage broker about these schemes before you consider buying. Um, and ensure that you've actually given very careful thought um, into those schemes before proceeding with any of them. The next cost that you need to factor in is the deposit. Now, that's pretty much like an upfront cost. So stamp duty is your cost that you would pay at settlement when the property is transferred to you. Now we're going to move to deposit. So Um, that's another cost to consider. So when you buy a a home, you'll typically need to pay a deposit up front to secure the property. 
So that deposit is usually a percentage of the purchase price. It's normally 10% or it can be 5%. Um, and it's paid to the seller or to their real estate agent. Um, so uh, it's either paid uh, to the real estate agent or the um, seller's um, solicitor's trust account. So saving for that deposit can be pretty much one of the most significant challenges for first home buyers or for any buyer really. Um, but it is a critical step in the home buying process. So just factor that in. And another thing worth noting is some real estate agents may ask you to pay a holding deposit when you find a property. That's usually something like a thousand bucks, especially in the Victorian state. That's pretty normal. And it shows that you're very serious about buying. And that thousand dollars usually gets deducted off the um, balance of your 10% or 5% deposit. So um, and it's generally refunded to you before you actually buy. So I, uh, sorry, it's, it is refunded to you before um, before you proceed with the transaction if you decide to return to, to return to the market before you actually sign a contract. So that's digressing a little bit, but overall, just make sure that you do budget for a deposit. Um, the other sorts of fees, there's a few other little fees that I want to mention to you that's worth keeping in mind that you would otherwise pay at settlement, not upfront, but that you would pay them at settlement. So there's various other expenses to keep in mind, such as your legal fees, you know, your conveyancing costs and things like your building inspection fees. Maybe you want to take out some title insurance. That's, that premium, premium is usually payable at settlement. And that's a discussion for another time. But legal fees, for example, they cover the cost of hiring a solicitor or a conveyance such as our, such as us, um, to handle the legal aspects of the property transaction, which include things like reviewing the contract um, and the, and um, any disclosure statements before you buy, uh, conducting property searches, um, just to make sure you understand more what you're buying. Uh, things like uh, you know, co conveyancing costs can include. Uh, the legal legwork to transfer the ownership from the seller to to the buyer and ensuring that all the legal requirements are met in the transaction to ensure a smooth and final settlement. So that's all the legal costs. Inspection fees might include things like your building and pest inspection. You know, that's essential for identifying any potential issues with the property before you buy. So you know, that's a separate cost. That's something that you would incur optionally if, if you wanted to get the building inspection done. Um, and in addition to the costs already outlined, you may be required to pay the government, or you probably will, almost 99% of the time you do, um, you would pay government registration fees to register the title in your name. And the amount of government registration fees that you pay really depends on the purchase price of the property. And it's a bit like stamp duty. The higher priced the property, the higher the registration fees that you'd pay at settlement. But generally in each state, the land titles office would have an online calculator just to work out a rough estimate of what those costs would look like so you can budget accordingly. Beyond all of those acquisition costs, because we've, we've focused on the acquisition costs, so that they, just to give you a quick summary, that includes stamp duty, government registration fees. Um, there's another fee called PEXA, which I didn't mention, and that's just a little once-off fee that you pay at settlement. It's very nominal um, that you pay um, Property Exchange Australia to settle the property for you. So that's, um, uh, sorry, to, to use Property Exchange Australia's platform to settle the property electronically. So you've got your stamp duty, you've got your PEXA fee, you've got your transfer registration fee, you've got your deposit, and you've got all the other little costs like an inspection fee if you want an inspection. Uh, maybe you want to pay for some title insurance at settlement. Um, you know, those sorts of costs are uh, uh, something to keep in mind as part of your acquisition costs. And then the other cost you really need to factor in is your running costs. So beyond all of those acquisition costs, it's essential just to consider the ongoing expenses such as mortgage repayments, council rates, um, homeowners insurance and maintenance costs. Budgeting for those expenses will help ensure that you can actually afford not only to purchase the property in the first place, but that you can ma maintain it in the long run. So really think about those sorts of costs as well. So as you can see, buying your first home includes various costs beyond 
just the purchase price of the property. So it's very essential to research and budget for those expenses just to ensure a very smooth and successful home buying experience for you. And that is all for today's episode of the First Home Show. So I, I really hope you found this discussion on costs associated with buying your first home very helpful. I'm sure it's shed a lot of light in, to, to help you feel more prepared because that's what I want for you, for you to feel prepared going into the market. So I hope this has given you that little bit of extra confidence going into the market, knowing what you need to budget for. And please join us next time as we continue to explore topics related to your home ownership. And until then, happy house hunting.